Well, when I was on the edges, I was constantly getting stuck. I don't notice any uh, any difference in the yields with uh, with the farming, uh, the squirrely part of it. You know, now I just go straight rows. Lon Strum rotates corn and soybeans on his 1,000 acre farm in Story County, Iowa. Before installing a riparian buffer, his tractor would occasionally get stuck on the banks of Bear Creek. While he no longer produces corn or soybeans from the buffered land, he no longer loses his crops during wet years, doesn't have to worry about getting his tractor stuck, and enjoys the benefits of a healthy stream with a significant amount of habitat. I mean, this is, this is the hunting paradise of Story County right here. They're uh, hunting mainly pheasants. They have come from Alaska, Michigan, all over Iowa. The, the demand is very large. And there's always something new out here. We can go fishing or we can go out here and kick up a deer or pheasants or partridge. And oh, grandkids and I are out here, oh, yeah, a lot, yeah. Ron Rizdahl rotates corn, soybeans, and alfalfa on his Story County farm. Ron planted his riparian buffer 12 years ago. And I don't think we've lost hardly any stream banks since 1993, probably. Or before, we'd move in the fences about every year. Yesterday morning when it was flooding, you just come out here and they put a couple weirs in to, to monitor the water. And instead of just rushing through it at 60 mile an hour, it just kind of flows. And I think that's a big difference in the stream banks. Riparian forest buffers, comprised of trees, shrubs, forbs, grasses, and preferably native prairie plants, protect the water quality of streams and lakes, are an effective management tool in controlling erosion, and provide diverse food and cover for wildlife. Jim Woolley is a regional wildlife biologist with Pheasants Forever, a nonprofit organization dedicated to the protection and enhancement of pheasant and other upland wildlife populations through habitat improvement. Pheasants Forever is interested in uh, riparian buffers and other buffer systems because of the habitat that they uh, these types of practices provide for wildlife, for pheasants and for other wildlife as well, including non-game wildlife. Beyond that, it's going to be an exceptionally good economic benefit for that landowner. He's taking ground that in a lot of cases, uh, while it is uh, in many cases productive ground, it also is ground that has some problems associated with it. Floods out, uh, is wet in many cases when it's not flooded and is difficult to farm. And uh, that landowner receives cash rental plus incentives uh, based on the soil type that are going to provide him with, uh, with an excellent rental rate on that ground. Uh, he'll be essentially paid to do uh, some very, very good things for the environment. Joe Coletti, economist at Iowa State University, has a few suggestions as to how landowners can add value to their riparian buffer. Riparian forest buffers can earn landowners money. They can be enrolled in a federal program, the Continuous Conservation Reserve Program. This program will provide up to 15 years worth of annual rent at 120% of the normal rates. Plus, the landowner will get 90% cost share to install the buffer and a modest annual maintenance payment as well. Uh, buffers can also yield marketable products such as hunting uh, lease payments, where you would rent the land to different hunt groups. Or uh, you could sell woody cuttings, uh, such as curly willow, to the floral market. Or if you're interested in, in a specialty food uh, market product, you could sell hazelnuts. Perhaps the most exciting way that a repairing forest buffer can produce profits for a landowner is to provide a fiber from the trees and then the, uh, the grass component of the repairing buffer. And you would take that fiber and turn it into a door product. Uh, that's, that's an exciting and growing uh, opportunity for using the fiber then from the riparian forest buffer. A riparian buffer is a living filter comprised of trees, shrubs, forbs, grasses, and native prairie plants, sucking soluble nutrients from surface runoff and shallow groundwater up into the plant. The buffer protects the stream or body of water located next to it. A well-established and maintained riparian forest buffer will protect water quality, stabilize eroding banks, supply diverse food and cover for upland wildlife, improve aquatic habitats for fish and other organisms, and increase property values by generating income from products harvested from the buffer. 
Mike Gold is a professor of forestry at the University of Missouri Center for Agroforestry. He has worked with landowners establishing riparian buffers for 15 years. A riparian forest buffer is typically composed of three management zones. Zone one is a narrow area with no management activity next to the water's edge and often includes a mixture of native trees, shrubs, and forbs that are adapted to floodplain conditions. In narrow streams, a canopy of trees may completely shade the stream when mature. The principal effects of zone one are to stabilize the bank and provide woody debris for aquatic habitat. Zone two is a much wider area adjacent to zone one and can be designed for active management. This zone consists of trees and shrubs that can tolerate periodic flooding. Their primary water quality purpose is nutrient uptake and storage. The woody stems also help slow flood water. In addition, this zone can be designed and managed to provide wood products, wildlife habitat, and alternative agroforestry products such as nuts and berries or woody floral products such as curly willow. Zones two and three are where your primary economic returns can be realized. Zone three provides high infiltration, sediment filtering, and nutrient uptake, and can help disperse concentrated runoff. Native grasses and forbs are normally preferred for their multiple benefits and adaptability, but dense grasses and forbs such as wildflowers will work. Zone three species composition will depend on the severity of surface runoff from adjacent crop fields or grazing lands. You can increase the filtering capacity and potential economic returns of zones two and three by trimming, cutting back, mowing, or harvesting the shrubs, grass, wildflowers, and forb species. By keeping the plants in a state of vigorous growth, they will actively filter more soluble nutrients from the water. And if you plant products that can be sold locally, you can generate income. Little ground already. Dick Schultz is a riparian buffer ecologist at Iowa State University. He established the Bear Creek Research and Demonstration Project in 1990. Before you select the kind of buffer to install along your stream, think of what you would like the stream and riparian zone to look like and what you would like the site to accomplish. Once you've identified your objectives, walk the site with a natural resources professional and explain your objectives and desires to them. They may use the Natural Resource Conservation Service's Stream Visual Assessment Protocol or a similar tool to help you identify the functional problems of the riparian zone. Once those site problems and objectives have been identified, select the buffer type that addresses your specific site needs. Keep in mind that riparian forest buffers and grass filter strips may not solve all the identified problems along your stream corridor. They are primarily designed to reduce surface runoff of sediment and agricultural chemicals, bank erosion, subsurface movement of agricultural chemicals in shallow groundwater, and degradation of aquatic and upland habitat. They are not designed to stop bank erosion along deep channels with vertical banks or to stabilize the channel bed. They have no impact on groundwater moving through drainage tile networks and they're not usually designed to accommodate livestock grazing. To solve these problems, one or more other riparian management practices may be needed. These include stream bank stabilizing bioengineering techniques, small wetlands to intercept field drainage tiles, stream channel stabilizing boulder weirs, and controlled grazing practices. When identifying types and arrangements of vegetation, consider the three zones that have been discussed before. It's usually advisable to use native trees, shrubs, grasses, and forbs as they're best suited to your specific site conditions. Both bottomland and upland species may be suited to your site. Consider as wide a variety of species as possible to develop a diverse wildlife habitat and to reduce the potential for diseases and insect attacks. If you're planning to sell products from your buffer, it's best to identify markets prior to purchasing plants or seed. Your local natural resources professional can provide assistance in selecting specific plant species for your site. Usually the biggest question is how wide to make the buffer. A good rule of thumb is wider is better. For surface erosion control, buffers between 30 to 50 feet will work in many agricultural landscapes. 
However, filtering subsurface flow may require significantly wider buffers. And buffer widths for wildlife habitat depend to a large extent on the kind of wildlife the buffer is designed to benefit. However, even in this case, wider is usually better. By comparing your objectives and available government cost share programs, you can determine a buffer width that works for your particular situation. Also keep in mind that a buffer width need not be the same throughout its length. Widths may vary to accommodate runoff hotspots or to smooth out field borders next to a meandering stream. Make a sketch of the buffer on an aerial photo and identify major problem areas such as severe bank erosion, gullies, drainage tiles, etc. And then place your trees, shrubs, and grasses in their appropriate zones and accommodate any unique problem areas according to your design. For example, trees and shrubs and deep-rooted native grasses shouldn't be planted directly above a field drainage tile. A list of the different plant species, their planting location, and spacing are critical, part of any design sketch. Also identify the need for other riparian management practices, such as stream bank bioengineering, in-stream boulder weirs, or field drainage tile wetlands. Remember that a totally functional riparian zone will require combinations of both riparian and upland management practices. To ensure that your riparian forest buffer is a success, seek out assistance from your local extension, natural resources conservation service, or state forestry specialist. Now that you have a design for your buffer, the next steps are installation and maintenance. Brad Riphagen is the field coordinator for Trees Forever, a nonprofit organization founded in 1989 dedicated to planting and caring for trees and forests. When seeding grass and forbs, a firm seedbed is needed to ensure that the small seeds are in contact with the soil, yet remain close to the surface. You can drill directly into soybean stubble and into sod that has been killed with glyphosate. When planting trees and shrubs into a crop field, it is a good idea to drill grasses like Timothy or perennial rye which won't outcompete with the trees and help to prevent erosion during the first five years of buffer establishment. Order trees and shrubs early to assure receiving the desired species. Plant tree and shrub seedlings in the spring and fall as site conditions allow. Grasses and forbs should also be planted in the spring and fall. The primary maintenance activities include weed control until the trees and shrubs are large enough to compete on their own. Mulching, mowing, and herbicides can all be used. Mow zone three as high as possible to remove annual weed seed heads, but not young grasses and forbs. Prescribed burning during the first four to five years can also aid establishment. Once established, these grasses and forbs need to be either hayed, grazed, or burned regularly to maintain vigorous growth. It's pretty simple. Vigorous growth means more filtration and therefore cleaner water. Replace significant losses of tree and shrub seedlings during the first three years to ensure the desired plant density of the mature buffer. Protect young trees and shrubs from deer, rabbits, and beaver. Wildlife damage protection can be involved and expensive. And finally, inspect the buffer annually and after significant storm events to determine the need to remove excess sediment at the cropland edge that can prevent shallow runoff from flowing evenly through the buffer or to repair concentrated flow cuts. A well-established and maintained riparian buffer will protect water quality, stabilize eroding banks, supply diverse food and cover for upland wildlife, improve aquatic habitats for fish and other organisms, and increase property values by generating income from products harvested from the buffer. For more information on this agroforestry practice, contact the University of Missouri Center for Agroforestry the USDA National Agroforestry Center in Lincoln, Nebraska, Iowa State University Agroecology Issue Team in Ames, Iowa, your local extension, Natural Resources Conservation Service, or State Forestry Specialist. This video was produced at the University of Missouri Center for Agroforestry within the College of Agriculture, Food, and Natural Resources.